When you're first learning JavaScript, I usually hear two libraries or frameworks always mentioned. I always hear learn React or Angular. But today I'm going to talk about two other frameworks, Vue.js and Ember.js. And I'm going to explain to you why I think you should think about those frameworks to learn first when you're learning to program and trying to get a job. Stay to the end and find out why. Today I saw an article on Hacker News on Vue.js versus React. And it got me thinking why so many people love React so much that whenever these types of topics comes up on Hacker News or on YouTube or anywhere else, you get this big flame war and people are explaining why they love React or why they love Vue.js or something like that. And I could see a lot of debate in this topic. So I thought I would go ahead and explain why I chose Vue.js and Ember.js for that fact over React and Angular, which is usually the go-to frameworks everybody recommends. And it's interesting, this first comment says, this guy moved away from React to Vue about eight months ago. And one of the, one of the reasons he did was because of JSX. So I made a quick presentation of this. So why not choose Vue and Ember versus React and Angular? So let's talk about it. So first thing, this is usually the, the argument I hear all the time is jobs. Like you can't get a job if you know Vue.js or Ember.js. You, you want to pick the one that's the most popular. And Really, according to Indeed.com, there's still plenty of jobs out there for Ember.js and Vue.js for that matter. Definitely Vue is more. Like I just went into just here, Indeed.com, and I typed in Vue into the San Francisco to find jobs, and I see 157 of them. It just in San Francisco, for example, which has a lot of developer jobs in it. If I type in Ember, still 186. If we type in Angular, I get 652 in React. React is definitely the most popular at 1469. So if you learn Vue.js or Ember.js for that matter, there's still plenty of jobs out there. It's not like these frameworks don't have people and don't have companies looking for them. So I, I don't think that's a really great argument against learning those frameworks as your first framework. And also, it's good to note that if you do learn one of these Vue.js or Ember.js and you create a portfolio of different websites and you really learn it well, there's a lot of employers that will work with you even if you don't know the exact framework they're using. Because if you look at most jobs listings out there, they're going to ask for like a ton of things that you should know. I mean, let's just take, an, let's just take a random one from Indeed. So if I just take a look at front engine front engineer at distribute.com you can see what you need to do design and write software but what you'll need strong coding skills experience four years of experience uh, this one isn't oh here's at the bottom our stack angular one typescript react redux typescript backend use python flask postgres sql i mean there's all these a laundry list of technologies so really they don't really expect you to know all of them. So don't feel like you need to know all of them to be able to apply and do the job. If you can show that you're good at one of these frameworks, that'll get you in. Obviously, if you know the framework they're, they're asking for, that helps. That'll help you get to a higher position and get you in top of the stack. But that's not going to be a disqualifier for a lot of places because it's impossible to find everybody that, that they're looking for. Niche. So this kind of goes against maybe some kind of thoughts because everybody thinks, well, if you're starting out, you want to learn the most popular frameworks and stuff out there. But really, um, there's if you go for something like Vue.js or, or Ember, there's going to be way less competition on people applying for jobs. So there's, as we just saw through San Francisco, there's still plenty of jobs for Vue.js and Ember.js. I'm not like I'm asking you to apply for learning a framework that has no jobs at all or only has one or two. There's still plenty of jobs. But you're gonna have you're gonna go against less competition, and that's a good thing. And it's easier to stand out because because if there, if you're competing against a thousand React developers and five thousand Angular developers, and there's a smaller community, it's gonna be easier to get a job if you kind of narrow your focus to to jobs on the framework that you know really well. So that that'll definitely help you out. And if you are a part of the open source community, you start putting out your own modules and you kind of start blogging about, get your name out on that platform, that really helps you out. And definitely, once you get some experience down in some of these technologies, they are well sought out for and they pay pretty good. So if you're an expert React developer, there's probably 
you know, hundreds of other expert React developers out there. If you're an expert in Vue.js and have experience under your belt, you're an expert in Ember.js and you have experience, those are very difficult to find and a lot of companies can't find people to to fill those positions. So they end up buy, they end up, up hiring someone that might be an expert in React or Angular because they can't find someone that's an expert in Vue or Ember.js. I've definitely seen that in my own career as I've been uh, going through and I've definitely had companies contact me looking for an Ember developer who has experience, which is really difficult for these companies to find. So if you can get that type of experience, that might be the way to go. And also just to realize, and it's not on this slide, but it kind of goes back to this jobs. Once you learn a framework, a library, um, front, front end front framework we're talking about, client side, it's easy to, it's not always easy, but let me say it, it's it's easier to transfer those skills to another framework. You're gonna start seeing patterns of like, oh, how this one framework or library does components versus this other. So you're gonna be able to transfer that through and it's gonna be easier to learn the next one. So definitely documentation, documentation and community is a big part. Both Ember.js and Vue.js have you know really large communities. They have excellent documentation. Um, both of them are open source. They both have pretty quick uh, release cycles. So it's, it is under active development and has been for years. So that's, that's really good. One thing to keep in mind is that JSX is not, uh, you can put JSX in both Ember and Vue, but it's not there by default. So for, this was a, a part, this paragraph here, I grabbed right off the Vue.js guides where they talked about why you should choose Vue over React. So for many developers who've working with HTML, templates simply feel more natural to read and write. The preference itself can be somewhat subjective, but if you make the developer more productive than the benefit is objective, you can add JSX support in Vue.js and Ember.js. So if I go to this website here, they kind of talk about why they use these directives, which kind of are similar to Angular and why they didn't go with JSX by default. And it talks a little bit about the advantages, but it also says that HTML-based templates make it much easier to progressively migrate existing applications to take advantage of Vue's reactivity features. It's much easier for designers and less experienced developers to parse out like HTML code with directives than it is to look through JSX code where you're kind you're combining the HTML and JavaScript together. And then there's preprocessors, there's Pug or Jade that you can easily put on there. So some argue that you you need to learn an extra domain specific language to be able to write templates. We believe the difference is superficial at best. So it's really easy. The directives that you can put in inside your view templates are really simple, like the, the Vion modifier. And also component scope CSS is, is really nice. You can have one file that has everything in for your component. So that that's a big debate and it was debated quite a bit here in this this Hacker News article if JSX is good or bad. Some people just love it so much, it just makes so much sense to them and other people are like hating it. Uh, so it's definitely, it's very contentious. If you have an idea what you like better, le leave a comment below and let me know. But I am on the camp that I rather just write stuff in my templates and HTML. So one other thing that's good, and you could say it's a little bad, but I think the the positives outweigh the bad, bad, the negatives is that there's no corporate backing for Ember.js or Vue, unlike with React and Facebook and Angular and Google. So both in Vue and JBS are independent open source. So we don't have to worry about Facebook or their weird licensing or anything like that. The development is driven by the community and they push it forward Evan Yu with uh, with Vue is as uh, he is dedicated towards making sure that that the framework goes in the right direction. They have core teams that that come up with ideas. So definitely, that's a good thing. You could argue that there are some definitely companies in each that each back each one of these languages. Like LinkedIn is really popular on the Ember JS side. There's uh, some of the founders of Ember JS are some that are in different companies that may have some influence on the direction they go. In Vue, you can argue that Lar the Laravel community is 
really influential and in where Vue goes. But for the most part, they're open source and there's no corporate backing. So there's, I can't go through all the different benefits. I'm not going to go, maybe in a different, in a different presentation, I'll go through the, the cons, pros and cons and the differences between these frameworks. But a couple of nice additions, Vue.js has that single file components. So you can have your template, you can have all your kind of data lot, your data code, your logic, and your CSS all in one file, which makes it really nice. You know, Ember.js is the opinionated framework, meaning that when you use it, you have everything you need. You have your router, you have your, your templates, you have your components, you have everything in one place. You have your linting and there's tools for that in other frameworks and things like that. But this is really baked in to Ember's philosophy. And there's a certain way to do things in Ember and, and that makes things easier. And of course it has convention over configuration, kind of like on Ruby on rails. Have you been looking to learn more about web development, JavaScript? I have three courses, three courses that I recommend in the links below. You can click on any of them. There are Udemy courses. One is like 30 or 40 hours. They're all on sale this week. You can get them for $10. It's an amazing deal. I would go ahead and check it out. If you click on any of those and you buy any of those courses, I get a few bucks. It's an affiliate deal. So I appreciate it, but I only put links below that I really recommend. So I want to let you know once again that there is a $10 sale going on for Udemy and please check out those links. That really helps me out. Thanks. So that is all I have for my slide deck here. So I'm going to wrap it up here in a minute, but that that's just a few of my thoughts of why I chose Vue.js and Ember.js over React and Angular. I think if you're new, a brand new developer, after you start learning the basic HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and you've kind of dipped your toe maybe into jQuery and a few other things, and maybe Lodash, definitely start looking at these client-side frameworks. And I would suggest, you no, know, give Vue.js a shot, give Ember.js a shot. Don't be afraid that you have to learn React and you have to learn Angular because that's the only way you're going to be able to get a job. They're just you're going to be competing against tons and tons of other people. Maybe niche down a little bit, find something that's still popular that that's in demand out there like these two frameworks. So thank you again for watching. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button later.